Welcome on into the Wolverine Recruiting Show. Clayton Safey here with EJ Holland, presented by Lewis Jewelers. Make sure to like this video before we get started here. Smash that like button. Hit the subscribe button. That really helps us out as well. We appreciate everybody watching here on YouTube. EJ, a huge week for Michigan football on the field, but also in recruiting. Tons of visitors. Uh, I think, what, a couple dozen visitors going to be in attendance and probably even more when counting a bunch of unofficial guys and, and whatnot. Uh, but for a night game against Washington, 8 p.m. on ABC Saturday night, doesn't quite have the fanfare that it did you know, maybe a couple of weeks ago just because Washington came in preseason number 20, Michigan trying to get things back on track, but uh, the Huskies drop a game to FCS level Montana in the opener, but still a big game, uh, especially with the group slated to be in attendance. So let's talk about a few of those guys that are going to be here uh, in Ann Arbor for the game, and then we'll talk about in a second just what this win, uh, if Michigan is able to pull out a win, would mean for the Wolverines on the trail. So I guess a, a brief rundown of some of the guys that are going to be in attendance. Yeah, it's going to be an absolutely massive weekend. Even though the game has lost a little bit of luster, it hasn't from a recruiting perspective. This is still a night game. This is still a big game against a quality opponent. This is still a huge visitors list with a ton of big names and important targets. So Michigan's going to look to take uh, full advantage of that. And yeah, just to kind of run down some key guys, you know, there are a handful of official visitors coming in this weekend, including some uh, big time defensive linemen, starting off with Kenneth Grant, massive 300 pounder out of Indiana, one of Michigan's top overall targets. He's a guy that, you know, just I feel like he needs that extra push to give Michigan a commitment. Uh, right now, it's really between Michigan and Ohio State, but Michigan recruiting him a lot harder than OSU. So maybe this is the game to do it. Um, you know, you have another big time defensive lineman coming in, Dion Walker, but he is coming in on an unofficial visit. But Michigan in a, a really good spot for Dion. They always have been. And, you know, a, again, I feel like the same with Kenneth Grant. He's a guy that just needs that extra push and maybe a win over Washington in a night game atmosphere is the thing that does that. So you have two uh, two high quality, high level defensive line on defensive linemen coming in, as well as another guy, Mason Graham, who's a recent offer out of California, coming in on an official visit, uh, just locked it in, uh, recent offer. So Michigan really, really focusing in on defensive linemen. You flip over to the opposite uh, side of the trenches along the offensive line. You have rivals 100 offensive tackle Josh Connerly coming in, one of Michigan's most important targets. Uh, for this cycle. He's, uh, you know, from the Pacific Northwest, Washington has been considered a favorite in his recruitment. So I think a win over Washington would obviously, you know, do uh, do wonders in his recruitment. But I feel like Michigan has positioned itself to land him. And, you know, it, with success on the field and a sense of stability, I think Connerly is very open to leaving the Pacific Northwest. And uh, Michigan has done a fantastic job. He was on campus for the Big House Barbecue unofficially this summer. So, you know, he's had FaceTime with the staff three times over the last uh, few months, including at the Seattle Summer Satellite Camp. So Michigan's done everything right in this recruitment. And another guy they're bringing in from the Pacific Northwest is Mark Nabu, a fellow offensive lineman who also made a summer visit. Um, you know, I think Michigan is in that top group right now. This is going to be his second unofficial visit, so likely to get him back in for an official visit later this fall. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of talent in the 2022 class coming in. You also have some key commits, including five-star defensive back Will Johnson, who is, uh, who is uh, you know, the leader of the class and is going to be working hard. Uh, you have Miles Pollard coming in, Cody Jones, some high-level other high level defensive backs. So it's going to be a big night in the 2022 class. And of course, we have to mention Walter Nolan, uh, five star defensive tackle uh, coming in as well. And, you know, with Walter, he left Michigan out of his top group. You know, things have been trending down over the last couple of months, but you never know. I mean, his recruitment has been extremely strange with a lot of twists and turns. And I think the fact that getting him on camp, that Michigan's getting him on campus. Um, is at least a positive. I mean, you have to look at it in a positive light. And like I said, who knows? His recruitment has been 
kind of all over the place. A lot of it's going to come down to NIL. So win over Washington and if Michigan can figure out NIL, you just, you, you really never know with him. Um, and then in the 2023 class, a lot of big names coming in as well. Dante Moore, uh, the crown jewel of the, the 2023 class, the quarterback at Detroit King, uh, borderline five-star and some other big name in-state guys like wide receiver Samaj Morgan, offensive lineman, Amir Herring, defensive lineman Jalen Thompson, all those in-state rivals, uh, 250 targets, as well as some out-of-region guys coming in, like Rivals 100 linebacker uh, Tackett Curtis out of Louisiana, Rivals 100 linebacker Jaden Osbury out of Louisiana, whose older brother is Austin Osbury, who we didn't mention in the 2022 class, but uh, also a Rivals 100 defensive back. Uh, so yeah, just you know, we're spinning out so many names because this visitors list is so large. But uh, bottom line is a lot of talents coming to Ann Arbor, and this is a, an absolute massive weekend. Yeah, so the stage is set with all those names that are going to be here. Um, you know, you look at the atmosphere; it's always electric for night games at the Big House. Uh, I thought the crowd was great even last week for a noon start, the first time the fans were allowed back in the stadium since November of 2019. Um, But it's going to be a great atmosphere. Michigan's going to have a chance to win this game. They're favored by five and a half points uh, over Washington. How important is it for Michigan to win this game? Uh, And is it a little bit more important now, oddly enough, uh, after Washington lost because, you know, this doesn't seem to be as good of a Washington team as we may have originally thought a couple months ago or even a couple weeks ago. Uh, does that make it bigger for Michigan? Like now is it is there more to lose now that Washington is coming in as an unranked team? I think there might be when you look at it from a team perspective, but from a recruiting perspective, again, this is still going to be a night game against a really quality opponent. Uh, this game guarantee basically guarantees that Michigan starts maybe three and zero, assuming the Wolverines win this one and then beat Northern Illinois. So that's what recruits have been looking for a really strong start, creating that sense of stability. And like I mentioned, you know, in, in the beginning that could give that extra push to some guys that have been leans, but that have had question marks like a Dion Walker, like a Kenneth Grant, it could give Michigan the opportunity to really cement itself as a leader for an elite prospect like Josh Connerly. It could really cement Michigan as a major player for, you know, a, a, another out of region rivals 100 guy like Austin Osbury. Uh, it keeps all the commits solid. Will Johnson, Cody Jones, Miles Pollard that may have some other options coming in if Michigan, you know, falters this season. But uh, I think a win over Washington is massive, not only because it's a, a win over a big opponent at a night game, but because of that stability factor. Yeah. And, you know, I know everyone's going to be asking this specifically as well. We, you know, we talk in a more broad sense, but for one guy in specific, uh, Damani Jackson, the five-star cornerback commit uh, or, uh, for USC, you know, he's pledged to USC. Uh, what would a win for him uh, mean for, Or, you know, what would a win for Michigan, I guess, mean for their chances with Damani Jackson specifically? Because he's coming in, you know, he's committed to another school, but obviously is still kind of considering Michigan. Uh, If they notch a big win over a team out west, what would that do? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I can't believe we rolled through all those. I know. (laughs) I forgot about Damani Jackson. Uh, But, yeah, no, I mean, Damani Jackson obviously coming in. And I want to make it clear that he is still coming in. He suffered a season ending injury but he will be on campus for an official visit uh and you know like we said in in the video last week you know he's a guy that has always grown up a michigan fan he could have just come in for the ohio state game and enjoyed that game because his you know parents are from ohio and, and that game means a lot to the family but he decided to come in for an ov against washington And if Michigan beats Washington, I think it's likely he comes back in for an unofficial visit for that game against Ohio State. Uh, Damani's keeping his options open. It's not like things are extremely stable at USC. So a big season and a strong start for Michigan. And I think they position themselves well uh, to maybe get a flip, not right now, but down the line, depending on how things continue to play out. Obviously, he's good friends with Will Johnson. Like I said, he grew up a Michigan fan. Uh, he has all his family in the Midwest, so 
still makes a lot of sense here. And Michigan's continuing to make him a top uh, priority despite his pledge to USC and despite the uh, season ending injury. Yeah, I just figured we had to talk about Damani <laughs> Jackson. Perhaps. All our videos were about Damani last week, so we just kind of forgot about him. Right, exactly. We've talked a lot about him, but now that the week is here, uh, it will definitely be one to watch. And, you know, it, it would go a long way, as you said, if Michigan was able to win this game, uh, you know, for him, who's obviously still interested in the Wolverines. Um, let's talk about uh, switch gears and talk a little bit about our travels over the last week. You've traveled, you know, quite further than me, uh, you know, making a West Coast swing to see a bunch of guys. So, uh, you know, and, and I was able to see Aaron Alexander, two star Michigan linebacker commit at Belleville just on the road. So a little bit easier trip for me, but take me through your trip uh, and, you know, what you saw out of some of the guys that you were able to catch. Yeah, so I started off uh, in Chicago where I live and then made my way over to Denver um, and saw Michigan offensive line commit Connor Jones. So Connor's one of the more undervalued prospects in this class, only a 5.5 recruit, which is the lowest uh, designation for a three-star but I think he's much closer to a 5.7, which is the highest designation for a three-star. Connor is a very much an upside prospect, um, not in the sense that he needs to work on the technical things. He's actually very fundamentally sound. Uh, his hand placement, his bend, all of that good stuff checks the boxes. So he, from a technical standpoint, he's all there. It's mostly just his body. Um, so he's about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, which is great height, but he still needs to add some strength. He needs to kind of reshape. Uh, his upper half, ha add some more muscle in his lower half. So I think with Connor, the biggest thing is just going to be the strength and conditioning program. And the, the other good thing about Connor is that he is uh, a gym rat. He's always in the gym. He's always training with the uh, former NFL offensive lineman, Matt McChesney, who's a top trainer in the Denver area. And so I think that's going to come. So I think Connor, again, is, is really one of the more undervalued guys. He had a really strong game, uh, played against inferior competition, but did what he was supposed to do, serving up a ton of pancakes, and uh, he killed it. I, I really like Connor. He's a, a great kid as well, and he grew up a Michigan fan. Uh, his father is originally from the Midwest, and, um, you know, I think that might help a little bit. He has a lot of pride in what it means to be a Michigan Wolverine, and so, you know, sometimes that, that gives those guys the added drive to be part of the program and to work a little harder, and so I think Connor's going to do that. Uh, after I, you know, spent some time out in uh, Colorado, I made my way over to San Francisco, to the Bay Area, to see Arizona defensive back commit Zeke Berry um, for national powerhouse De La Salle. So for those that don't follow high school football on a national scale, De La Salle has been one of the most prominent programs in America for quite some time. So if you can get a kid from De La Salle, you're getting a, a high upside kid that's been coached well. Unfortunately, Barry uh, suffered an injury, and I didn't get to see very much of him. But from a recruiting perspective, even though he is committed to Arizona early on, I think Michigan can can punch Don Brown in the mouth a little bit and get him on campus and see where we go from there. Uh, Courtney Morgan has ties in his recruitment, being a West Coast guy, and Ron Bellamy has developed a strong relationship with him. So I would expect him to make his way to campus. And then I made my way up to the Pacific Northwest in Seattle. I had a chance to see Josh Connerly, who we talked about earlier. Look, Michigan in a really strong spot here. I think Michigan may even have a lead. And with Connerly as a prospect, he's a borderline five-star guy. He's kind of the opposite of Connor. He's a guy that's raw fundamentally, but man, that athletic upside is so big. He's only been uh, a full-time offensive lineman for three years. He actually played running back early on. Uh, and then hit a growth spurt. And so he has a ton of athletic ability. And his teammate is actually rivals 100 cornerback Caleb Presley in the 2023 class. Uh, really good shutdown corner, one of the, the best underclassmen in the country. Jim Harbaugh offered him on the spot at their summer Seattle satellite camp. Um, and he's looking to make a visit to Michigan at some point this fall. So those were the guys I saw during my uh, trip out West. And then my you know, tough journey. It was, you know, going airport to airport layovers and whatnot, all the way to Belleville, uh, to see Aaron Alexander, uh, and a couple underclassmen targets that we'll talk about in just a second. But, you know, I was intrigued to see Aaron when EJ, you gave me the assignment to, 
you know, head out to Belleville and, and see him, uh, you know, because he's a guy that Michigan, you know, he popped up on Michigan's radar in the summer, was in front of them at some satellite camps, impressed them enough to earn an offer at those satellite camps, and then jumped on the offer right away and pulled the trigger, committed to Michigan. And the number one thing, I think, you know, he's an inside linebacker, but his number one trait right now is his speed and specifically his straight line speed. Um, you know, when the play was in his area, I thought he did a great job of getting to the ball quickly um, and making hits. He's also physical as well. Uh, you know, he's not just a fast guy. He, he has contact courage uh, and he, you know, comes forward, makes some big hits, plugs some, uh, you know, filled some gaps that he you know was responsible for uh he also had a tackle for loss in the backfield on a blitz uh right through the a gap and he was there before i even hardly could press record uh you know before the play on my phone so he he is lightning fast uh one of the concerns with that i thought was changing directions a little bit it's something that you know ej you and i were texting back and forth during the game that you said you had some concerns with as well when you saw him up close and personal in the summer at some satellite camps i thought that you know he did a good job dropping in coverage when he needed to and, and Dearborn by the way uh lost 49 nothing to Belleville so they were throwing quite a bit uh especially as the game wore on and the lead started to get bigger and bigger so he's dropping in coverage quite a bit you know the ball would maybe be dropped down to the flat and I thought he had a little bit of a tough time um you know uh switching directions and maybe trying to make a play where he wasn't at, you know, and I think good linebackers are able to always find the ball. So uh, I thought that that was, you know, one area of concern. But, I mean, I was pretty impressed by the way Aaron played. Uh, I thought that he also ran hard with the ball on the offensive end. He had a play where he had about three, four guys on him, gang tackle. You think the play's over. Dearborn thought basically the play was over. Their sideline at least was preparing for the play to be over, and he dragged the entire pile uh, at least 10 yards. Um, I'm, I'm talking about by the time that that run was over, there was six, seven, eight guys uh, on him, and he was able to keep going. So he plays with a physical nature to him. He's not just a fast guy. Uh, once he gets going in a straight line, uh, I, I, you know, I really like his speed. And then let's talk about 2025. It's hard to believe we're talking about a 2025 guy, but quarterback Bryce Underwood. Uh, and the story on him, is, you know, last winter uh, – EJ and I were out at Sound Mind, Sound Body, um, you know, one of their little camps there in the winter. Uh, quarterback university owner and, and top quarterback trainer Donovan Dooley was telling us, hey, uh, keep an eye out on this Bryce Underwood. You know, he's number 100 and whatever out there because they wear the T-shirts with the crazy numbers on them. And we were like, man, how, how old is that kid? He's like, yeah, he's an eighth grader. Uh, and now he's a freshman in high school and he's extremely physically developed he has a huge arm um you know i thought his accuracy was a little bit off um they tried to throw a couple deep balls he overthrew a couple guys and sailed them uh but he also threw five touchdowns and that speaks for itself he did not look like a freshman he looked like probably a junior in there uh, so two two years ahead of time uh you know already looking like a junior so i was impressed by him He's going to be one to watch, has an early Michigan offer. Uh, and then 2023 linebacker Jerem Jeremiah Beasley, uh, who played running back and next to Aaron Alexander at inside linebacker, uh, more of an outside linebacker prospect is where he's listed on rivals. But I liked him. I thought he was he was close to being as good as Alexander, and he's you know a year younger. Um, or he's 2024. Is that right, EJ, or is he 23? 2024, yeah. Okay, yeah, 2024, so two years younger. Uh, and, and I thought he was close to being as good as Aaron Alexander, uh, extremely physical as well. Doesn't have as much speed, but I thought his instincts were really good. And he was actually around the ball even more, in my opinion, than Aaron Alexander. So he's definitely one to watch as well. But a lot of talent out there at Belleville, a 49 nothing win. Uh, they are, uh, you know, uh, talking to Aaron Alexander after the game, they're gunning for the state title game. Remember, they lost a thriller to West Bloomfield in the semis last year. Uh, and he's looking for Michigan to blow out every opponent, he said. So uh, keep an eye on that as well. But um, anything else on Michigan recruiting here before we wrap up? Uh, one name I didn't mention since we were, you know, rolling through the visitors so fast. But Lander Barton is an extremely important visitor when we're talking about linebackers. You have Aaron Alexander committed. Uh, but he's a guy that Michigan has long made a top priority. They missed on some key inside linebacker targets. 
uh, this cycle. And so with Aaron Alexander being more of an upside guy, landing Lander Barton is, uh, is something that the staff would really love to do. They want another high level guy to pair up. They want a high level guy to pair up with more of an upside guy like Aaron Alexander. So Barton coming in for an official visit, uh, really big Michigan right now in the top group along with, uh, Texas and Utah. If you need an example or you need a way to show how big of a recruiting weekend this is, it's the fact that we're leaving out guys, uh, you know, forgetting that there's a guy coming in that's this important because there are so many of them uh, that will be in town. So keep an eye on the Wolverine.com throughout the weekend and beyond uh, for not only Michigan football coverage, but Michigan football recruiting coverage as it is a huge weekend. So keep it locked there uh, and we'll see everybody next time.